All right, guys. We're <laughs> back with the show today. Uh, wow. That was fun. That was exciting. Yeah. Welcome to Billboard Crypto. Uh, I forgot my intro. It feels like a, a mid-tro right now. A mid-tro. Uh, welcome to Bitboy Crypto, home of the Bit Squad, people's channel, largest, greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. Whew, no channel works harder to keep you in the know about crypto. My name is Ben. Uh, coming to you live every single day, as you guys know, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and today, we are going to be talking about what is going on, surprisingly, in the world of crypto. Um, let's see here. We're going to be covering some Twitter buzz today. You're looking at charts, gonna have Frank come up. I just opened a uh, short a little bit ago. And I don't wanna hear this. I, I don't wanna hear this. Oh, don't short the market, you're gonna make the price go down. No, I don't wanna hear that, okay? It's a it's a $5,000 position. I think we're gonna be okay. Um, so let's see here. BJ did call me back. That's good at least. Okay, let me pull this up and see how my trade's doing here. Um, we are up half a percent. So yesterday we finished our trade up 40%. I posted on Twitter. I, uh, using a new trading suite, I lost four out of five trades because I was starting to figure it out. Uh, pretty tight stop losses for the most part. And I hit the 40% trade yesterday and now the account is up. And you know what I do with my profits, TJ? What'd you do? You know what I do with my profits? I made, a, I made 20%. I just put $5,000 in the account. So I got it with $6,000. I went to BitGet. On BitGet, believe it or not, it's one of the three exchanges where you can buy moons. Do you know what moons are? I do not. It's the cryptocurrency subreddit crypto. Ah. So I bought myself uh, 8,700 moons. I'm going hard on that, on that subreddit. They, they're going to try to get me out of there. They're going to try to, you know, uh, roast me to death. But I was built for this, okay? I, I live in the brazen bull. <laughs> you know what that is? Yeah. Yeah. I live in the brazen bull. You can't, you can't uh, smoke me out. So I uh, got a bunch of moons. We're going to go hang out, hand out some moons on the cryptocurrency subreddit. Yeah, it's not a shill, by the way. I uh, want everybody to understand that. Just try to get a little more involved in the, uh, in the cryptocurrency subreddit community. Very accepting, very welcoming there. Um, we've got our number of people that hate us down from 99.9% .9 there, I think. Now it's like 99.98%, maybe. Sorry. We'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I did. So that's what I did with my profits. That was a pretty oh, fun thing. Sick. So... Um, let's right. check out what's going on with Twitter. See if there's anything I should tell you guys about there. A lot of interesting stuff. People send me some interesting information. Um, let's see here. It ain't going to be a battle. How about this? I want to show this. This is what I want to show. Do you know what this chart is, TJ? What's that? This is the oh, is FTT chart. Oh. From the day that Gary Gensler was confirmed as the leader of the financial policy transition team. Wow. Is this not the most telling thing you've that's, ever said that's yeah is it I, ever seen th this is ridiculous i wonder if they're gonna pull that up in the in a hearing next week they better uh spf may testify virtually now you hear. think they you, so did he ever officially respond to who you said spf will testify he responded on twitter oh wow yeah i responded on twitter and said uh he would be glad to glad to be there um virtually i think i don't think he said he'll be there in person obviously but uh very 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 interesting um, when you look at this chart, this is something that just, guys, Gary Gensler's out. If this chart does not spell Gary Gensler out, I don't know what does. He started meeting with SPF. This is, this looks like collusion. Um, at, this looks like some kind of plan was launched here to, uh, you know, to pump FTT, to be able to give it more influence, to be able to pay off more political donations, to be able to slide Gary Gensler into the Treasury Secretary. What do you think about that? Yeah. I sounds, think that was probably the move. Uh, BitBoy, on that all-white diet, been here since the start of the pandemic. Lost some weight. Yeah, I've lost 60 pounds, guys. Um, and I'm almost, I'm like 189 right now. And I almost got 295 up the other day. So, very close to my goal. I want to do uh, 185 and then bench 315. But I'll take benching 300 again with losing 60 pounds. Pretty good. Um, okay, and how about Kevin O'Leary? Look at what CZ said about <laughs> Kevin O'Leary. It seems $15 million not only changed Kevin O'Leary's mind about crypto, it also made him align with Fraudster. Is he seriously defending SBF? Guys, Kevin O'Leary is done in crypto. I don't know if y'all can tell that. He's become so unbelievably irrelevant in the last several weeks. Um, you know, BitSquad having something to do with that for sure. He just, he, he's floundering right now. He doesn't know how bad he's continuing to make himself look. Uh, CZ's calling him out here. But here's what you have to understand, guys. That $15 million that Kevin O'Leary was paid, 
That's your money. That's your money if you have money on FTX. That's yours. So, uh, you know, that's what's so upsetting about this. Somebody said, oh, like, you know, people shouldn't be paid to promote, blah, 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 blah. No, the fact is, this is your money. <laughs> Guys, this is a gigantic Ponzi scheme. And I tell you, this threat, did you see this thread between yeah. um, CZ and SPF here? Yeah, I pulled it up. They're going to talk about it on the basement today. Yeah, I mean, it was really something. Um, come on, Ran. Ran. I saw that, too. Ran. Come on, Ran. Come on, man. Well, you saw oh, Sam okay. responded to that. I was like, yeah, that actually sounds like a great idea. Yeah, of course he did. Yeah. Um, let's see. Where's the other one? Uh, let me pull it up. Well, you saw that. Here's how you fix FTX. Arson. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Burn it down, and let's never look at it again. Um, okay, let me go CZ here. I want to come over his little tweet storm here, because there was something in here that I thought was really fascinating. Um, man, it's really coming down here. It is. You saw that uh, Kevin O'Leary is supposed to testify at that uh, financial committee hearing, yeah. too? Uh, guys, yeah. Kevin O'Leary is about to get... I was going to say, that'll be interesting to see how tough they come... Like, what the questions are towards him and what his demeanor is, if he's still trying to protect Sam or if he's just saving face at this point. Hi, Ben. Can you discuss Flare token airdrop on January 9th? Maybe. I'll, uh, I'll check it out. Let's see. I mean, obviously, I know what Flare is. Okay, well, we do due diligence after we make them an investment. Oh, yeah. Surface tirades. That is quick shout out to Crypto Sevo. He did tag me in a tweet last <laughs> night uh, about the Gemini Earn program being uh, being able to withdraw from that again. And, you know, he showed confirmation. That that's his, bullish. His withdrawals. Yeah. So that's why I said bullish if confirmed. I don't know if that's everywhere. You guys go check that out for yourself. But that is a pretty big deal. Means, you know, Ge Genesis Bank should yeah. be in a better position. Why isn't Gary going after Kevin for not disclosing his endorsement deal like he did Kardashian? So gross. Well, it's an exchange. It's not a token. And to be fair, Ethereum Max was a scam. Uh, but I guess so is FTX. So there you go. Uh, but I want to say this. This here is so unbelievably Sam Bankman freed. I, I don't know what else is. Sam was so unhinged when we decided to pull out as an investor and guys, this is the front that he's putting on here, okay? When he is in front of uh, these interviewers or when he goes in front of a hearing, it's a front. The real Sam is somebody much different. Sam was so unhinged, excuse me, when we decided to pull out as an investor that he launched a series of offensive tirades at multiple Binance team members, including threatening to go to extraordinary lengths to make us pay. What does that remind you of? First thought on that? I wasn't hesitating. You have to read it again. I was reading the chat. Including threatening to go to extraordinary lengths to make us pay. Mm. Refinance. Mm -hmm. When Sam Trebucco told them, we'll destroy you if you don't give us money. This is their MO. This is how they operate. Um, which, by the way, I did hear from uh, Arkham Intelligence. Uh, and they are saying that they did not get paid by uh, Sam Bankman fried to put out that New York Times article on ICP. Pressing them on it. We'll see what happens. Uh, so just know, guys, if you are in the ICP community, I am looking uh, into that. I am having some discussions with those folks. Uh, but we know this is their MO. This is what they do. Uh, they attack people. We still have those text messages. See, he still got them. Uh, shortly after that, Sam began investing in friends in high places, from media to policymakers to celebrities, and he used that network to manipulate public opinion, including attacking me and others in the industry. Uh, my ethnicity was a focus of these attacks. Uh, he goes on to say here, I'm Canadian and Binance is not a Chinese company, guys. I I don't think China and the CCP like CZ. I've told you guys this a lot of times. Yeah, he, I, made, I, a, he made a really good point there where uh, if you are a Chinese company and you're out there publicly saying you're not, that doesn't usually last long. Right. They want to people to know what's a Chinese company and what's not. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, anyways, this has been a very fascinating thread to watch between these two folks. Um, and, I, and I think this is not over yet. Uh, there's still, I can't remember where it was I saw that people think somehow Sam's going to still pay everybody back. Yeah. What, what is wrong with y'all? Do, do you understand the money's gone? The, the money's gone. The money doesn't exist anywhere. It's poof. Proof of poof, as they call it in the cryptocurrency subreddit. Those are my people. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens with this. But I heard he got roasted on CNBC for good reason. 
Uh, I told Kevin O'Leary uh, several weeks ago that I was going to make sure he was eradicated out of crypto. And man, he's just making it so easy. I didn't have to do anything. All he's got to do is just talk. <laughs> he throws himself under the bus um, for sure. So, uh, all right, we'll do uh, t- more Twitter buzz here in a little bit. Uh, let's check out, don't forget to uh, check out Catching Up to Crypto. We have a video coming out, I don't think today, probably tomorrow, detailing our book tour, all of our stops. Where we're going to be stopping. We've got the dates. We're still working on locations, but we have the cities and we have the dates now. Uh, so that'll be out probably tomorrow, I think. I just had a funny idea for Christmas Day. You, yeah. should, do, you should do a fireside reading of like, chapter one or something like that uh it, like doing a video of you reading it by the fire for a you know like we'll call it chapter. catching up to Christmas. Yeah, there you go it reminds you of tron's giving yeah uh so there you go don't forget to catch uh, check out the book we're crushing vitalik buterin right now we're crushing him his book's out we're still crushing him. um all right check out the markets here we go 21,992 cryptos 530 exchanges um volume up a little bit 40 billion uh, market cap, $857 billion. Bitcoin dominance up a hair, 38.5%. ETH dominance up a hair as well, 18.2%. And look at this. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Something For was happening. 86 Paraguays you can send an ETH transaction. Uh, and guys, I'll tell you, for our portfolio video, we had a really, you know, an interesting uh, scenario this morning where we we're looking at some coins that are down for the week when the overall market's not down that significantly. Um that we're going to be adding to the portfolio. So we're making some moves in the portfolio today. So make sure to check out that video at 3 o'clock. If you guys watched the video I posted early this morning, that was left in my uh, drafts from two nights ago. I forgot to post it. It took forever for uh, to upload because I still don't have internet in my house, believe it or not. Long story. Uh, my house apparently doesn't even exist, according to uh, the cable company. But the fact is, uh, we got the funding for the bill to get registered, and uh, it's very exciting. Uh, by the end of this month, we will be able to talk to you guys. We're going to do an AMA on our policy Discord. Put our policy Discord uh, link up there in the chat. I'm going to go in there for a live AMA. I think we'll probably post it as well on, on YouTube, uh, maybe following or maybe live, not sure. But uh, we're going to be talking about our bill, what this means, uh, you know, how this caused a reaction uh, from FTX and Sam bankman fried that kind of put us on this course uh, of action. Some very fascinating stuff. Uh, so I hope you guys check that one out. I know we usually don't put out a video last night and this morning, but you know what? I made it a couple of nights ago. I wanted to go out. I was also making fun of Elizabeth Warren. So, you know, it's always good stuff. All right, let's check out the 24 hours here. We got graph up, EOS up, chain up, dash up, all over 5%. Uh, biggest losers of the day. Uh, we got Nexo. How, how, what, what do you think about the Nexo prospects now that it is leaving America? Uh, I I never liked it that much anyway. Yeah, it's but. tough. You know, it's tough. Obviously, in the given wake of everything we've seen, it's tough to trust any of these, and it's not like leaving the United States makes you more confident, yeah. you know, in, in my opinion anyway. So, I mean, it, obviously, they're getting away from regulation. Well, I will tell you, um, last night on the video, I did ask people about, do they want coin reviews? Like, what do the people want us to do um, about new coins or, excuse me, not to be confused with new coin, new Genesis, but... Uh, you know, how do people want us to cover that? And the, the general consensus seemed to be most people still want those. So I don't know. Maybe maybe we come up with a, a standard where it's like we do the information. We tell you the prospects. We tell you what's good, what's not good, uh, totally unbiased. And maybe, I don't know, some people are saying, like, don't do price predictions with them. I, I don't know. I, we'll, I'm not we, sure. we'll figure out something. It'll take but it, it, they're very clear yeah. that most people do want some kind of coin review video. Yeah, we've heard that a lot on yeah. almost every platform, that that's a lot of what people are looking for. Mm-hmm. You know, the break, the technical breakdown, you know, they want to know if we think, you know, what's better, optimism optimism or Arbitrum, you know, like, or, you know, compare and contrast them. Those are good videos, you know. Where does the multi-million dollar fee for submitting a bill go to? That's a great question. I had no idea about any of this. Uh, you're going to be... Lobbyist. Se- you're you're going to be securing a policy team. You're going to be securing... Um, uh, a lobbying company. So we have a lobbying company that we are uh, contracted with. Uh, you're also going to be paying money to supporters. Now, these are not, the people you're paying money to as supporters, they're not necessarily active uh, politicians right now. It can be someone that was, let's say, in a cabinet or someone that was a senator and stepped down, uh, you know, or retired, right? You can pay them. Uh, you can't, I don't think you can technically pay a current no, politician to support your bill. No. I don't think that's how that works. Um, but it's just a lot of marketing costs. And, and really the truth is we were told that my bill would cost $7 million 
if it was anybody but me. But it only cost us about 3.6 million total uh, because we have no marketing budget because of my channel. We don't have to market it at all. It's all natural and organic. So you would also have to do a lot of marketing for your bill. But fortunately, we, we didn't have to do that. So, um, okay. All right, let's check out. Yeah, that uh, is another chart. funny side note on the Ethereum Max with Kim Kardashian. I did hear that the SEC dropped it. You know, or set, you know, like they basically had, you know, somebody said that Kim Kardashian beat them. I don't know if that's technically true, but I did hear it turned into nothing. It was a publicity stunt. Yeah, that's what it was. All right, let's go um, bring Frank on. Frank, come on. All right. Yeah, and this section of the show brought to you by BitGet. Uh, for uh, if you guys want to find the link, it's in the description. Those cryptocurrency moons there, or in the chat. There we go. Throw on the bit. Throw on the oh, BitGet hat that. for the uh, for the segment here. Live hat switch. Uh, but yeah, guys, hope you're having a good day here. Uh, we do have some interesting stuff to look at on the charts. Uh, yesterday or last night in the Discord, I was talking about how we were expecting a move to the downside. We did come up to a key level of resistance um, with some bearish confirmations or you know things were starting to look pretty bearish. So uh, we are looking to maybe take a little bit bigger of a move to the downside here. And I'm going to show you guys why I think that. Um, Higher daily time frames do still look bullish, right? We do have that weekly bullish divergence still confirmed. Uh, blue wave crossing down. Look at that uh, little <laughs> notification here. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump in here so I can give you guys an idea of what I'm looking at. So uh, let me see. I think this may actually be the wrong chart. Let me go ahead and switch that real quick. Um, so yeah, guys, the higher daily time frames are still looking bullish. We actually got uh, the bull divs to confirm on almost all of these time frames except for the weekly, right? Uh, the weekly is still printing that bull div, but we now have it confirmed on the six day, confirmed on the five day and below. Uh, so this is a pretty bullish sign, at least in the longer term, right? I, you know, as I always say, there could be noise on the lower time frames, maybe some pumps, maybe some dumps on the lower time frames. But if these higher time frames play out, guys, we could be in for an exciting, exciting move. And you could see just looking at the volume profile here, we are basically tapping on the door uh, to this low volume gap, which could lead us all the way up to that $19,100 level back into this old range that we were trading at uh, recently, right? So uh, if we break through these levels and we break into this low volume gap, things could get moving pretty, pretty quickly. Um, now, however, as we move down the time frames here, uh, things do actually start to cool off. Um, now, one thing I am looking at for, uh, you know, as long as we can keep, because last night we did uh, immediately start printing this green dot on the daily time frame with money flow coming up. So, as long as we can hold this, and this does confirm, um, you know, this would make me think that we do have some more upside in the future here, and it would uh, kind of support those higher daily bull divs. Um, but if we wind up losing this, I will start to uh, expect some lower prices here. Uh, but as of right now, green dot's still printing on the daily, so it is still looking pretty good. But then as we work our way down, obviously nothing goes up in a straight line, uh, well, at least most of the time. Sometimes things do go up in a straight line. Uh, but uh, 12 hours starting to cool off, and this is the main thing I'm looking at. Uh, not only do we have a red dot printing here on the four hour, but we also have money flow starting to come out on the lower time frames. You can see on the 10 minute money flow coming out, your 12 minute as well, money flow starting to come to the downside. And even your 15 minute is starting to cross over into the red. Uh, and then on top of that, we also... <laughs> We also have uh, the three hour red dot confirmed, right? So, uh, you know, I would lean maybe for some consolidation here, either consolidation or I, I would lean about, uh, you know, sideways slash bearish uh, for the short term here uh, because there are some bearish signs popping up. But again, as long as we don't lose that green dot on the daily, I will still uh, be leaning a little bit bullish in the long term. And if we pull up our uh, BitLab market intelligence, just let that load for a minute. Um, and speaking of that, guys, actually, Kelly just shot me a text message and asked me to let you guys know uh, if you tried to get any of these indicators or sign up for BitLab Academy in the last 24 hours, you might have gotten an error. Um, he told me they're changing some things on the back end, and that should be fixed end of day. Um, so just in case you guys had trouble, uh, just to give you guys a little bit of an update there. But if we take a look here, guys, we also are getting some bearish divergences here on the three hour. We have a momentum and an MFI uh, bearish divergence. And I do believe we do have it on the four hour as well. We do have some bearish divergences. There we go. We have uh, histogram, stochastic, and momentum bearish divergences on the three hour. So just another thing, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, on the four hour, uh, just another thing kind of pointing to a short-term move to the 
the downside. Uh, and then just to show you guys some levels that I will be looking at, uh, let me go ahead and make sure we're looking at the right chart. Um, here we go. So, oh God, yeah, 15 minute as well, guys. Just, uh, you know, this is, we had seven, seven bearish divergences here on the 15 minute right before this big dump to the downside. We had money flow coming out on Market Cypher B. Mark, uh, BitLab Market Intelligence letting you know you had a MACD, histogram, RSI, momentum, OBV, MFI, and an external wow. uh, bearish divergence. So you had those seven bear divs there. And that external one is pointing to the bearish divergences um, on Market Cypher B. Um, but just to show you guys some levels that I'm looking at here, if That's we do- That's pretty cool. It called that pretty well. I listen, listen, that that is the beauty of this indicator. This is why I, I've really been liking market intelligence a lot is, uh, you know, if, if, you, if it's letting you know, hey, there's one divergence here, um, you know, you, you could take that into account. But when you get a seven like that, and you're getting divergences through all of these different indicators, it's a pretty strong signal that, uh, you know, uh, this is the 15 minute. So beautiful little scout trade. I mean, honestly, you know, if you're unless you're, uh, you know, if you're not day trading, it might not be the best move uh, to be looking at something like that. But a nice one percent move for for someone like me who scalps the low time frames with leverage, uh, that's a beautiful signal to to you know jump in, grab your bag, and jump out. Uh, so just and it just makes it so simple. Uh, and yeah. Uh, recently, I will say this. I typically stick between three and five x leverage, but I will say I will say uh, I am in. Uh, a uh, few different trades right now, uh, and three of them are on 10x leverage, and one of them is on 15x leverage, uh, which is pretty high for me. That's pretty high for me. Uh, but careful, uh, be careful with leverage, guys. Yeah, just be careful. If you guys aren't experienced traders, uh, you know, start spot trading. Start with no leverage. Uh, you know, get your feet wet. Understand the markets. Learn how to trade. Uh, and then, you know, when you feel confident, that's when you can start working leverage into things. Um, you want to use it as a tool. It's very easy to use leverage as a gambling outlet, uh, but you can very much use it as a tool. It's actually developed for uh, as a risk management tool, right? Because uh, you can you can risk a smaller portion of your account, right? So instead of if you have a thousand dollars in your account, instead of putting your whole account that full thousand dollars on one trade. You could put 100 and only risk $100, put it on 10x leverage, and essentially you're trading with uh, $1,000. Um, but yeah, and set your stop losses so you don't get liquidated. Uh, but anyway, uh, just a little uh, uh, disclaimer there. Uh, but the next levels to the downside that I would be watching, guys, we're going to take a little bit of a look at uh, some volume profile here. Let me go ahead and minimize this. Uh, Basically, the uh, we are obviously sitting right on top of some support right here. But if we lose this level, a major level I would look at is this 786 FIB level at about $17,050. Uh, and then you can see we have this high volume node right down here. Uh, this is 16, uh, about 16950 I don't know if we're going to make it all the way down there, um, but this would be a, a pretty interesting place to watch because we do have a lot of volume down there. There is also uh, a local golden pocket, very, very close. Um, so that's another level to the downside that I would be looking at if you are looking for a place for that you may get a little bit of a bounce. But again, you want to remember with the four hour red dot and all those bear divs, um, you know, it is potential, you know, there is a possibility that we could come down a little bit more. Uh, now, I will say this. Um, if we can hold, uh, let me come up to a little bit of a higher time frame here. You know, if we could come down to that level and find some support, I would feel still feel pretty good uh, about continuing to the upside a little bit. Um, but uh, you know, if we break to the upside for some reason, again, I am expecting more downside. Uh, but then we do have this 786 FIB level up here at $17,595. Uh, that would be a pretty strong level of resistance as well. And then obviously, we did have some news that came out uh, giving us these uh, this wild, wild uh, wick. If you uh, just zoom in on this so you guys can see. Um, that's uh, volatility, guys. That is, uh, let me hide this indicator so you can see a little better. Uh, giant doji candle right here at uh, resistance. Big wick to the upside, big dump to the downside. And now it does look like we may be uh, picking up, uh, you know, trying to pick a direction here. And that direction does seem to be down. Um, so those are the levels I'm watching, guys. Let's go ahead and real quick, just pull up the DXY, see if we can, uh, you know, take anything away from here. Take a look at the daily because we were looking at that daily bullish divergence um, on the DXY recently. We did get that pop to the upside, but we are now continuing back down. So again, guys, on Bitcoin, with the way the higher daily timeframes are looking and that weekly, all those higher daily timeframes have confirmed bull divs. The only one left to confirm is that weekly uh, that weekly timeframe that will, uh, if it is going to confirm, it will confirm on Sunday. Uh, so if we, and then if we can get that, I was talking to Ben uh, a little earlier this morning in the office uh, and 
you know, if we can maybe get a little bit of a move down here and then we get, uh, we, we have, I think on the 13th is more Fed news. Uh, if we could cool off a little bit and then that Fed news could be the catalyst for the next big leg up. And it would make a lot of sense because by that time, the weekly bull div will be confirmed and it would make a lot, a lot of sense uh, to get a move to the upside, right? Now, obviously with this news, uh, things get volatile. We've seen moves to the upside, moves to the downside. Uh, we get, it's basically, you know, we get, uh, you know, just, just thrown all over the place on these uh, news days. So, uh, and it's very unpredictable. So just understand that, but it would make a lot of sense. Uh, and I, that is kind of what I would like to see. A little move to the downside, have that meeting. Uh, maybe, you know, we get some good news and then that is our catalyst. Uh, and then if that happens, it would just line up perfectly with the charts, uh, which actually does happen a lot. It's one of the fascinating things about TA. Uh, shout out to this really, really loud Bitcoin sweatshirt. Yeah. I think that's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you guys at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Back to Ben. Bing bong. Oh, I mean, oh they, flip it around. My, uh... We flipped that hat. Was that? Yeah. Oh, no, you're good. There you go. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I said flip it? There, yeah. There you go. Look at that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they they missed my inhaler uh, call earlier, you know. Yeah. My inhaler out, and I had no volume. They didn't hear me breathe deeply. It's pretty sad. <laughs> um, all right. Let's go. Uh, man, I tell you what. I forgot what it's like having active trades open all the time. Yeah. It's been a while. I, I, look, I'm going to say this, and uh, I want everybody to take this with a grain of salt. Um, wow. When it comes to BitGet, I really like it. Yeah. Like, the app is really good, um, and I'm it, it's very simple. A lot of these platforms, they're not that easy to use, and so far, I've had a really, really easy time using it. So, Well, the um, cool thing is, too, there's, they've built in so many rewards and incentives, and you know, the more you use it, the more bonuses you get, and competitions and stuff so yeah it is very simple well, you mean remember this if you don't use it you lose it you lose it hey guys don't forget to smash that like button number one thing you can do to support the channel uh quick reminder monday i'm actually going to be in austin uh texas uh in studio with alex jones so uh you know i won't be here monday i should be here possibly the rest of the week we got some things up in the air um maybe with dc maybe in the middle of the week we'll find out what happens uh with that um, all right, <clears throat> Bitcoin Ethereum jump with stocks on jobs report release. Uh, Bitcoin back above 17K, uh, rising U.S. stocks as traders respond to a Labor Department report showing a rise in jobless claims. Possible sign, federal interest rate hikes could slow down. Economists suggest that low unemployment can mean people spending more, leading prices to increase with unemployment rising. Prices are le less likely to go up. Short inflation will be coming down. Uh, we also, have, oh, that was it. That was the only market story. So let's go ahead and move on to the Twitter buzz. Okay. Twitter buzz. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Twitter buzz. Ask him about gay frogs. Of course I'm going to ask him about this. I look like an idiot. Uh, Lulu is solid. Is that Lulu? Lulu Lemon? I guess. Lulu Lemon. I guess that's what it is. Let's, let's go to trading view. Oh, well, yeah, let's check this out. Uh, Lulu? Stocks, Lululemon, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's the day chart. I can't, well. You can't see this? Uh, oh, it's hard to switch over? Well. You got to pull this up. Uh, Jim Cramer, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Cramer. <laughs> <laughs> Lulu is solid. <laughs> that's, is that that's a Bear a Stearns call? Yeah. Is that a Bear Stearns call? I mean, when did he say this? Let me pull it back up. Yeah. Just so you know, it's tough to get in and out of this. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. But, I mean, you had to show that. Yeah. Lulu is solid. What time December was that? December 9th. Today. 9? 29 a.m.? Let me go. Let me check the hourly here and see when that dumped. Let's see. What time? What time is it now? 12.09, 11.09, 10.09. <laughs> you literally tweeted it right here. Literally tweeted it right before it absolutely collapsed. Um, appreciate all you do. Uh, thanks for listening to us. Thank you, Robert, for the Super Chat. Uh, Stuart Rodney with the Super Chat. Now that Vitalik, Elon, and CZ are all behind OpenAI ERC, you think it will keep going parabolic? Never seen tech this bullish. Um, I just don't know that much about it, to be honest with you. Um, but I do know that, I, I don't think that's a shill. I think that's a real thing. Do you remember seeing that? Uh... I've heard stuff about it. Same. I yeah. don't know too too much about it. I've been playing with the products. You know, it's awesome, but... Oh, oh. 
they're invested in that? I, I'm not sure. Hmm. Man, they said that's the fastest growing thing ever. Yeah, the app has been exploding. You know, as far as like it launched five on days Wednesday, to a million users or something. Like that? Yeah, it had millions of users and like unbelievable. The time it took Amazon like forty mo- or uh, Netflix like forty months. Yeah, it's, it, ask it crypto questions. It knows. Yeah, it knows. Um, so there you go. All right, next uh, next tweet here. All right, gotta do this. Twitter buzz. Twitter buzz. Putin, we will not sustain losses from price caps. Thank you. Thank you, Putin. All right, next. Okay, here it is. Uh, You won, CZ. There's no need to lie now about the buyout. We initiated conversations around buying you out, and we decided to do it because it was important for our business. And while I was frustrated with your negotiation tactics, I chose to still do it. Let's actually pull up the other two tweets in that as well. It's so nice that he unblocked me. I haven't been given as many personal attacks as I did before. Uh, I, I like to be able to read the tweets and stay up to date. I have to go to a different account. Uh, but he said, and here's I, where he responded to the hearing. You yeah. see this. I still do not have, I still don't have access to much of my data because uh, we deleted it all on purpose. Um, but he says, you know, basically he would like to try to commit and testify on that day. We'll see. I thought this whole exchange with CZ was pretty interesting. He, call, he basically called CZ a liar. Yeah, and oh yeah. Like, oh, remember yeah, what sure. he was saying about throwing glass stones or whatever uh-huh. not too long ago? If like if anybody's a liar through all of this stuff, it's SBF. Uh yeah, it's bizarre. Wow, he hadn't tweeted in a while. Let's see here. Basically, Kevin O'Leary was trying to defend SBF by saying if if CZ had if they didn't have to buy out Binance out of this deal, they would have had plenty of money to continue operating, but they had to buy out a couple billion dollars to get Binance off them. Basically saying they couldn't get the regulatory approval because Binance wouldn't, they didn't have KYC with Binance, so they needed them to off of their cap table, so they bought them out. And the guys on C were like, yeah, but did they buy them out with user funds? Like, that's the problem we're talking about here. Yeah. And there's like, is, and, and uh, O'Leary's like, I don't know. It's amazing how much people don't know about what happened there. Like, did I say glass stones, glass houses, whatever? Well, whatever it was. Don't throw glass stones either. But I'm just saying like, People are still trying to pick up very simple information. Yeah. And they're getting caught up on that simple information because he's lying about things. Mm -hmm. And they just, they stay stuck. Like, uh, you know, CoffeeZilla pinned him down pretty hard on... I feel uh, like he's done the best so far. Yeah, but it's obvious. I mean, it's not... All Coffee... Look, I'm not saying anything bad about CoffeeZilla. I like him. But all he's doing is saying what we all already know. You co-mingled the funds. Like, we don't need to hear you say it, Sam. We, we don't actually need for you to explain how they were commingled. They were commingled. Let's move on. Let's talk about the repercussions of that. Sam's still trying to get out of trouble. Mm-hmm. He's still trying to unmingle his commingling. There's no path forward for SPF through explanation. You, you can't explain your way out of this. Everybody knows. And too much of the mainstream are getting focused on Where's the money? Where's the money at? Let's let's get the money back. How can we save people? The money is gone. The funds were commingled. They stole all your money. And it's gone. Like, that's it. We need to figure out how to move forward as a space. And I think that's really where, I think a lot of people have been confused by uh, the things that we've done here on this channel. Um, you're going down to the Bahamas and you know we're organizing a protest down there right now. Uh, a, a ton of different things, right? Why are we doing this stuff? Are we doing this because we want Sam Bankman Freed to go to jail? I mean, sure, I don't want him to go to jail. Yeah, I think, I think he needs to. That's not what this is about, guys. It's not about punishment. It's not even about unwinding how this happened, okay? It's about how do we move forward? How do we protect people? And how do we prevent this from happening again? And if these people aren't held accountable, and there are not arrests, which there will be arrests, but if they're not, that encourages this to happen again. So getting these people arrested, it's not necessarily about their individual punishments. They're not going to be able to serve enough punishment to make up for the way that you feel with your losses if you've lost six or seven figures, especially, or more, okay? It's not gonna help that much. The money's gone. You're not getting the money back. It, it's poof, disappeared, okay? They embezzled some of it through property, and that might be a way maybe a little bit comes back, maybe 10%, um, but the fact is, It's about holding people accountable so we don't go through this again. 
It's about preventing Kevin O'Leary from creating his own FTX going forward, right? We reject these people that were involved in this. And this doesn't mean we reject Tom Brady or Steph Curry or, uh, you know, people that were just promotional, uh, you know, promotional pawns in all this. What about the people that were in on the scam, okay? We've got to prevent these people from doing this stuff again. So I'm glad CZ continues to go at him and, and continues to hold him accountable. Um, there's no way that uh, SBF comes out of this unscathed. I was talking to somebody yesterday about all the Dan Friedberg stuff and just how much tied into that, uh, to this, all that is. You know, it's like, we've got the biggest murder board of all time going right now um, when it comes to a lot of investigations around this stuff. There's still so much more to really dig into. And it's so important to figure out how to prevent it from happening again. Um, okay, all right, let's move on here. Upcoming FOMC meeting is the most important ever for Bitcoin. Watch out for the dot plot. Uh, guys, isn't it always the most important one, the one that's next? Yeah. Because the ones in the past, you know, they're not really having that big of an effect anymore. Um, the release of the CPI on December 13th, Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. will once again be the most important CPI ever. Which reminds me of that, like, time in television when, where they added the word extreme to everything. Yeah. Extreme makeover. Yeah. Uh, okay. The dot plot is released only four times a year in March, June, September, and December and presents the FOMC's economic projections, which look at GDP, unemployment rates, and inflation for the coming months, as well as over the longer term. The question for next week will be whether the Fed, led by Powell, will put into play a slower rate hike pace of 25 basis points or even a pivot. Huh, that's interesting. Will they change it to 25 basis points going forward? Um, we had a we had a my drinks. debate on that yesterday of like what actually a pivot is is it is holding you know changing course of pivot or re reducing rate you know like is holding if the, is a point two five would that be a pivot because it's not what's expecting some say yes some say no pivot so, you know, some, is a change in policy yeah some meaning that you're reducing the rates now like the rates are going down not being going up in any capacity or even holding crypto face who did crypto face interview. Scroll up a little bit. Miss Teen Crypto, maybe? She's in here. Yeah, I'm on her show later today. Uh, yeah. Crypto Face is in here. We love Crypto Face. Yeah. All right. Um, right. Let's see here. You look at this. We're looking at those pivot charts. Pivot charts don't look good, but basically when the Fed pivots, there's usually a much bigger collapse after. However, there are some things about this rate hike uh, period they're different than the previous ones. I, I didn't even understand the chart I was looking at when I saw it. It was like everything else. It was like two or 300 days. I know this has no correlation to uh, anything because I'm just remembering a chart that I saw. And then this one was negative 81 days. The long and short of it is there's something about oh, this little rate cycle that's much different. Oh, Justin Sun. Yeah, he, Crypto Face interviewed Justin Sun okay. like a week or so ago, I think. There's some, some hallmarks of this one that are different than any one we've ever had before. So if you're relying on another collapse after a pivot, well, I don't know if we're going to get that for sure. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. And I'll tell you this, and maybe it's because I don't come from a finance background. I, I don't come from, uh, you know, a world where we grew up watching CNBC or anything like that, because I certainly didn't. Most boring thing in the world to me. Doesn't it feel like this is the most public, newsworthy rate hike period we've ever had? As like, far as, like, the most people are talking about it now, then? Yeah. Uh... Yes, but like you said, it could be just our world. And you know, but I would say, now. in general, I would say society is a lot more financially minded today than they were even 10 years ago. Yeah. A lot of people, because of the effects of inflation, because of the stimulus money, that, that was a big wake up for a lot of people on monetary policy. Like, wait a minute, I got this money deposited in my account. Where did it come from? Yeah. Why? How? Maybe I should start paying attention to this. And I think, think people are paying much more attention now than they have in the past because they have to. Yeah, so that might be something else interesting uh, to watch. Where, like, it seemed like at one time, maybe there, if we go back to when they raised rates last, it would have been like 2011 to 2014, something like that, maybe somewhere around there. Wait, um, what? Let's pull that up actually, real quick. No, we haven't raised rates since 2009. We've been, we've been working our way, you know, we've been printing and losing. No, that's not true. That's not true. No, they, they were raised at some point. Um, let's see here. Uh, rate hikes. OMC. Go to the wiki page. Go to the wiki. Google wiki. 
All right, here it is. Let's see. We started raising 2015. 2015, we started raising. So 2011, um, they sat at a zero. Uh, it remained zero pretty much from the housing crash in 2008 uh, all the way through June 2011. Then they started raising it. It got as high as 2% uh, in 2019, uh, right before, you know, about a year before pandemic was in full swing. Um, and so when you look at this, see, this, this is so much different. We've never seen them this rapidly, I don't believe. I mean, these were barely bumping up 0.25. And I think the overwhelming speed and scale at which they've made this hike is what has made it different than oh, yeah. anyone we've seen before. Yeah, they wanted to have, to have a dramatic impact. Yeah. yeah. So I still, I don't think we're going to get a giant collapse after they pivot because everyone's holding their breath waiting for that. I don't feel like in these last times when they were raising at 0.25, everybody was like, all right, please, next month, next month, next month. I'm like, oh, I raise it 25 bips, whatever. So, um, okay. All right. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Two remaining hurdles, blah, 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 blah. Look at SBF here. SBF claims you won as he hits back at CZ, defamatory Twitter thread. We've already covered this pretty extensively. Uh, let me see if there's anything else with this. We can just skip right over it, probably. Uh, you didn't have the rights to plot as an investor unless we chose to buy you out. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, nothing new there. FTX founder Sam Bankman fried I'm willing to testify on the 13th. Uh, Sam Bankman fried tweeted that he will be... He said he will be in Washington, D.C.? I. It doesn't say that here. It says, I still don't have access to much of my data, professional or personal, so there's a limit to what I'll be able to say, and I won't be as helpful as I'd like. All right. <clears throat> But is the committee, if the committee still thinks it would be useful, I'm willing to testify on the 13th. Oh, my gosh. That's got to be, rem I mean, can you testify? You Can you testify remote? I'm sure you can. I'm sure they did in the pandemic. Um, it doesn't say he's going to be there in person. I mean, there's no way he steps foot in no, America. No, I think they're making that assumption. There's no way he steps foot in America. There's no way. Um, I think maybe his lawyers will prevent him from doing it. So, Ben HBAR still your number one pick for next run. It's up there. Um, it's definitely one of the uh, one of the ones that we like for sure. I mean, we like Algorand too. Um, I like ICP. Uh, if you guys haven't figured that out, of course you know my classics: Matic, Cardano, XRP, Ethereum. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, yeah, the thirteenth hearing. There's going to be. I got a really. Oh man, I got a really interesting wrinkle here. Uh, I can't really say. We should see what time does. That, what time that is in live react. Oh yeah, yeah. If he does go to that hearing, and he's in there, oh, he doesn't. He doesn't know. There's some stuff going on. He does not know about. Uh, very, very, very interesting if that occurs. I, it will be must see TV. What I tell you there. Um, okay, Sam Bateman Fried's parents are no longer teaching law at Stanford. Well, just breaking it. Not teaching it, just breaking it. Sam Bateman frieds messed up a lot of lives when his crypto exchange FTX collapsed. He lost billions of dollars belonging to customers. Um, now the damage appears to have spread to his parents. So sad. Both of them have been scrubbed from Stanford University. Oh, this is big. Yeah. They're scrubbing them. Stanford, super academic liberal university, scrubbing probably two big donors, not only professors, but two big political activists as well. Obviously, we know the dad had worked with, uh, you know, uh, Elizabeth Warren on tax regulation. Uh, the mom has her own PAC. The aunt has a PAC. The son's got some kind of funneling of political donations. Sam Bankman fried uh, the younger son, had as well. Uh, so this is big if they're separate. I've been telling you guys that the parents are puppet masters behind this whole thing. No doubt about that. Uh, let's see. His parents have been, by his own account, part of the rise of FTX and his own personal story. Not only are they politically influential in Democratic circles, Bankman wrote books on startups in Silicon Valley. Uh, let's see, a $16.4 million Bahamian vacation home in their name. It's gone under scrutiny. Uh, and that is in the parent's name. Most of, the, most of their real estate is in a, a separate company that's not in the bankruptcy. Reached out to the school to get back its take. Haven't heard back. They want to move past blame, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so yeah, that's very interesting that they are you know, pretty much drawing a hard line. Amber Group, set to end $25 million Chelsea deal. Lays off 40% of workforce. 
Singapore-based crypto firm Amber Group is all out to cut costs as it plans to send, or to end, excuse me, $25 million sponsorship deal with Chelsea FC. Lay off 40% of staff and close its retail operations. Wow, that's a lot right there. Uh, 40 million or 40% of staff and a $25 million sponsorship with a giant football club. Who's, who's still in the World Cup, by the way? I have no idea. Bra Brazil, England, or is England still in it? I'll be pulling for England if they're still in it. Uh, Amber Group was an active, we love the UK. You guys know that. Uh, was an active trader on FTX and reportedly had some funds uh, trapped in the bankrupt exchange. As a result, this is why FTX, once again, you look here, FTX is the reason for this. Uh, and I guess I guess really interesting, very fascinating information on uh, DCG and FTX working together. England is still in it. England's still in it. How many yeah. are left? Eight? Uh, two, four, yeah. So we've got Name them. Uh, Netherlands, Argentina. Okay. Croatia. Netherlands beat us, so. Croatia, Brazil. I think that's happening now. Mm -hmm. England, France, Ooh. Morocco, Portugal. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. So you probably got, you know, top pull teams, Argentina, Brazil. England. Brazil just won. Okay. Brazil just won. Uh, yeah, I love London. I had such a good time when I went over there. We're going back in February, the end of the month. So you guys know I, you know, made fun of the UK a little bit here and there in the history of the channel, but I'd never been there. And man, I really was impressed with London. It was, it's a great city. I would go so far as to say, I think it's my favorite city I've ever been into. I mean, America's America, but um, it, it was definitely a very unique experience. Let's see, they owed Vald's CEO $130 million as well. So you continue to see the contagion. The now, CEO or the, did they owe Vald? The, the CEO of Vault. Interesting. Which is fascinating. Yeah. Now, let's see, Ryan Selkis. Yeah, I saw this. You saw this? I couldn't tell if he was being tongue in cheek. I couldn't. I was like, please tell me. He said basically, because uh, he's been the one that I've been getting a lot of information about the Genesis. He's been really digging into Genesis Bank. And it's like when he said that, I was like, oh, great. Are we about to hear that they're going under or do something's going on with DCG or Grayscale? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see here. He, he asked to go. And they said no. Which is interesting. Here it is. I regret to inform you that I am bearish and there are still dominoes to fall 13 hours ago. Now, I believe it was about two or three weeks ago, he said he thought the bottom was in. And oh, so yeah. now he's changed his tune on this. A lot of people were asking him about that. Uh, Mike Alfred uh, in crypto 100%. Mike Alfred, the guy, he, uh, I like him. I'm not saying anything bad about him. Uh, but he is really like one of these ringleaders of like Tether and Binance are definitely going to collapse. Everything's going to zero. And, uh, you know, everything that's not, he's a Bitcoin maximalist, you know. So it's kind of a talking point that they have it almost comes across sometimes they want it to happen. Like, do you want Binance to be insolvent and everybody lose their money? And that's why I have a hard time. I would rather them be solvent and go with that unless we had hard evidence to the, to the otherwise. Um, but, you know, Mark Jeffrey here says he must have heard something. The biggest dominoes left, Tether Binance. There it is, everybody talking about it. Guys, Binance is not going under. I, I cannot, I could not imagine a scenario where that no, I, I'm looking a lot more. We talked about it a little bit. Hostile takeover of Coinbase. I think we talked about it on this is is in play for next year on a public level. And then Silvergate Bank, same thing. Like there's an I covered we looked at something. There's an aggressive short seller that was shorting Silvergate Bank and pushing mm -hmm. policymakers hard in Washington to help him out, basically. Uh, and that's some of the dominoes I'm looking at right now. Yeah, I, I still lean. But I don't think that's going to have a direct impact on the price. <clears throat> Everything's locked up. Yeah. I mean, all the money that people would be dumping is not accessible right now. Right. You know? So I think that matters. I really do. I really do think that matters. I mean, you're looking at 650,000 or 680,000 Bitcoin in the Grayscale Trust, right? Mm -hmm. That can't be sold. You're looking at, it's hard to know what the real market cap is, obviously, because um, of leverage. But the point is, if you actually add up the amount of real assets on Voyager, FTX, related companies, BlockFi, Celsius, what you see is it's a gigantic amount of supply. So I just don't know if there is enough to really, uh, you know, get that move down that everybody's waiting for. Uh, Eddie Parrott says, Eddie Gang still alive. Let's go. That's right. Eddie Gang all day. Um, we love Charles. We love Cardano. We'll get more into that USDC versus USDT stuff going on later because there yep. is a direct, you know, people going after USDT. 
Anchor will be huge in 2024 from Greg Ferguson. You know, I, I like Anchor. I thought it was a great project. Didn't they just get a big hack? It was a big hack on Anchor. Um, I'm not saying, who knows, maybe it wasn't their fault, uh, but definitely something that did happen. So, um, you know, maybe if anybody knows exactly what happened without the input in the chat. Cardano adds 20,000 new staking addresses on average monthly for over a year. In this line, Cardano wallet growth accelerated, adding 30,000 wallets in a week amid the FTX collapse. I mean, you had to have somewhere to send your Cardano, but wait. Cardano wasn't listed on FTX, was it? I don't know. It wasn't on FTX US, I know that. No, not US. It could have been on FTX could International. Have been. Uh, besides that, the number of Cardano-based smart contracts also surpassed 4,000 for the first time, growing over 300% for the first time this year. Um, as a December 9th, total staked ADA stands at 25.12 billion. Total supply, 73.59%. That number's actually gone up now. I was, uh, I think, about 71%. And I did want to say, by the way, uh, I did want to say, Kelly messaged me. What did Kelly message me? Something about- Probably uh, about the indicators. Frank mentioned it, you know, that if you had, about if you had there was a backup. technical difficulties in the last 24 okay. hours, it cool. should be resolved. Cool. Something on the back end of the website. So let's see here. What's going on with my trade here? I got, a, I got an alert from Big Dead. Oh, I'm down 0.18% in my trade. 0.18%. Just making sure it didn't hit my stop loss. Uh, leading Cardano deck suffers front running attack. And guys, the future of this show, by the way, is me stopping every 13 minutes to look and see where my trade is. Yeah. Who misses that? Who misses those fun times when we were doing that on the show? Uh, leading Cardano deck suffers front running attack. Uh, let's see here. In a follow-up announcement, MinSwap, uh, which is the lowest amount you can possibly swap, uh, confirmed that the issue had been fixed. The attacker has now started canceling newly created orders because he cannot get ahead of the user. According to data provided by DeFi Llama, MinSwap is the most prominent decentralized finance application on the Cardano blockchain with a total value locked of $28.45 million. You know, one thing that somebody said, by the way, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the comments last night about um, the video, Sorry, I do have a sweat today. Yeah, now it's the bit get sweats instead of the buy bit <laughs> sweats. That's funny. Oh, uh, the, the bit get sweats. Yeah. yeah. The bit boy. The bit get sweats. <clears throat> uh, the point is, uh, they were asking about, well, why, why don't you try to look at specific niches and cover some coins that are in different niches? You know, somebody told me about a niche I'd never heard of before while I was in Miami. Uh, and I had this person send some stuff to Nick Damani for us to look at. Nick Damani's going to be all over this. It's called DSI. Have you heard of DSI? Decentralized science? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's where, I'll, I mean, kind of, that's where a lot of this stuff started. Like the SETI program, Search for Extraterrestrial Life mm -hmm. or whatever. That's a lot of, a lot of people, that was kind of their first experience with mining, kind of, because you're donating yeah. computing power for science yeah. research, basically. But this is, this is along the lines of something different, though. This is decentralized fundraising mm. for of course it is. science experiment, for science Scientific studies, I guess. Because if you didn't know, um, there's a lot of corruption in the science I was gonna say, community. One of the best ways to launder money is through fundraising for research. Absolutely. Uh, because look, you have these big companies that pay for the results. They need scientists to come up under them to confirm what they need confirmed so they can make money in their business. So it's kind of like you, you look, if somebody does a coin review and they're paid for it, it's impossible to really do it 100% unbiased because you have some skin in the game, whether you own the coin or not, you've been paid for it. It's really hard to be unbiased if there's money involved. And you know, certainly learn that. But when it comes to science and these scientific studies, I'm not talking about any, I'm not talking about the pandemic. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, the jabs or whatever. It, it just in general, right? What happens is, is you are paying people to give you a neutral report that needs to go one way for your benefit. And so be, by being able to do all this stuff up front and decentralized and open and transparent, people are really able to track and see who's giving money to what and how this scientific research is funded. I thought that was very fascinating. Um, I thought, I kept thinking it was called sci-fi, but it's not, it's called DSI. So something on the channel to check out. We'll be doing a video on that uh, here. I don't know when, I haven't started yet, but how's, does that sound interesting? I know Nick Demondi will be all over it. Cause yeah, he, you know. Interesting-ish. Interesting-ish. I mean, it's like, it, it is, it'll be interesting to us, but it's is not Is anything gonna... interesting to you, TJ? 
Yeah, I'm just talking. I mean, if you're talking what about it? like name it, I want you to name it right now. We're gonna fight on the show. Something that's interesting. Yeah, name something that's interesting to you. Uh, interpersonal dynamics. Hmm. <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. Don't make me get off the apple crate. Cardano's scam alert impersonators use privacy token midnight's fake site to drain wallets. Ugh, hate when this happens. Cardano development team member Tim Harrison <clears throat> has revealed a new scam case involving a new project called Midnight. Be aware and please report this is a scam site being pushed by a bot supported impersonator of the legit and much loved Cardano underscore whale. Midnight's still in development and no token is available. Uh, but of course, you know, the scammers are going to get out there. They're going to try to make you think you can get it early. Midnight Project is currently in development and has not yet been launched. Furthermore, there is no token yet, says Harrison. So there you go. Be careful about that. Stablecoin wars heat up as Coinbase offers fee-free swaps from USDT to USDC. Okay, so that's what I, this is yes. what's interesting Big. is we're starting mm -hmm. to see, you know, the obviously we saw USDC through BlackRock getting an indirect access to the Fed you know, reverse repo program. That's pretty big. And now we're seeing a big push. Uh, we were noticing, we're, we were testing another DEX the other day uh, and only USDC pairs when you would typically think yeah. this particular DEX would have USDT pairs. So we're seeing a very big push in incentives. Coinbase, is this the Coinbase? So yeah, Coinbase basically paying people to convert all their USDT to USDC. They'll cover all the, Yeah, they'll cover all the swap fees. And so basically... Trying to incentivize people to get out of Tether and into USDC is very fast. So this this here is the very interesting dynamic that I've been telling you guys about for a while on this channel, which is it's not that Tether's insolvent. No. It's not that Tether doesn't have the backing. It's, it's not that if a bank run happened that, uh, you know, they drain all the money. That's not the scary part for Tether. The scary part for Tether is USDC is the chosen Stablecoin. They have to fight the dollar now. Exactly. Which means the U.S. Yes. So the attacks against USDT are going to be in the form of the adoption of USDC. Correct. Yeah. That's really where the problem is going to be coming in. And you're going to see the amount of Tether grants get smaller and smaller and smaller instead of increasing as USDC takes hold more in America. And, and some sites, some exchanges are going to remove it. Mm -hmm. You know, Coinbase and Circle are in the background Trying to make sure this is going to happen, I'm sure. Right. Everything will be yes. paired to swap with USDC. So it, you don't have, in my opinion, now don't keep all your money in Tether. No. Right? Don't keep all your money in any one place yes. or on any third-party exchange. Yes. But I don't think there's going to be a problem. I think history is going to judge me as correct, um, you know, over this cycle, is there's not going to be anything that's going to happen to Binance. Yeah. Now, a hack, there could be a hack, but in terms of insolvency, and there's not going to be anything that's going to happen to Tether. It's going to be a slow peppering, a slow removal of Tether from the United States market as USDC is positioned. Does everybody see now that USDC is going to be the coin or is going to be the dollar? I, digital dollar? I think so. Yeah. I mean, are there people that disagree with that? You think we're going to create our own separate digital dollar when USDC is here, usable, got the backing of the banks? No. And the fact that they, they added it in, you know, that it's getting access to the Fed is about as clear as it gets to me. Yeah, absolutely. So here we go. Check this out. Um, Coinbase calling its users to convert Tether stable coins to the stable coin it founded, USD coin. And, and to me, these are, this is almost like a dog whistle to people in a sense of Coinbase's opinion of USDT. And it's like, mm -hmm. hey, we're not going to remove it overnight. Hey, there's incentive. Go ahead and start moving over because at some point we're probably going to take it off. That, that's what I hear in this. And so uh, look at the stable coin supply. You see how much of it is in USDC. How much of it is in USDT? It is so crazy how fast USDC is taking over. Tether. Yeah, well, this is something that was interesting to me because the stablecoin wars, I would say, I, I could be a little bit wrong on this, but <laughs> really started heating up in 2019 when you started to hear all, you know, all these other stablecoins coming out. Gemini made yeah. one and, you know, there was USDC, USDT and, and a handful of other ones in this competition. And then it kind of USDC and T kind of rose up as the main two. And I didn't really get it at first of like, why, what's the motivation for stable coins? And then you realize like, oh, that is the base yeah. layer for all transactions mm -hmm. now. And you're getting all the information, you're getting all the wallet connections, you're getting basically everything to map all blockchains. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. Yeah, it is. Very interesting. <clears throat> all right. Ethereum whales accumulate over $690 million in ETH in just two days. According to crypto analytics firm. <sighs> Guys. Feeling very bottomish. I really am. I, I don't see 
I just don't see another crash next year. I mean, outside of going up and coming back down. Um, going up maybe 30% and coming back down, something like that. Um, new data from the market intelligence platform reveals Ethereum holders who own between 100 and 1 million ETH added 561,000 Ether worth about 609 million between December 5th and 6th. Uh, acknowledging the high volatility, Oracle providing network Chainlink has experienced over the past month. Sandman says it can be attributed to the excitement preceding the launch of the blockchain's staking feature. Um, Chainlink train at uh, whatever. Chainlink moving good. We, we added some Chainlink to our portfolio today. Um, you'll see in the video, very interesting. It's been down about 10% uh, over the last week, down about 8.5%, I think, when we actually made the purchase. All right. Ethereum Core Devs set March 2023 to ship Shanghai upgrade. And what was this? Gosh, where is this Bitcoin maximalist tweet? Was it Peter McCormick? I wish Peter McCormick would stop being a maximalist and come on over to the, our side. Let's see, was it him that put this? The, these Bitcoin maximalists, here it is. <laughs> My oh, top yeah. 50 people of Bitcoin in 2022. You know, the Bitcoin maximalists are real mad because there weren't like, there's basically no Bitcoin maximalists on there. There's the, no uh, maximal. And they were like, why didn't you put any Bitcoiners on there? And it's like, well, we did you know, put Bitcoiners on there, yeah. but not maximalists. Yeah. yeah. Lynn Alden, Lynn Alden, yeah. Lynn Alden, famously not an influencer. Uh, she's all 50. And if you go here, let's see. All of the developers in the ecosystem, all of the developers in the ecosystem. <laughs> I can't with these people. Like, I really can't. You know, the, the developers, they're the real all-stars. You know, they're the ones that really make everything turn. It's true, I guess. But uh, this uh, reverse applause, you know, Kind of funny, I thought. I got a kick out of that this morning. Um, okay, let's see here. So here we go. Core Dev set March 2023 to ship Shanghai Upgrade. Uh, when they have these upgrades, uh, you know, they name them after cities. We had the Berlin, we had the London, we had the Paris. Uh, now we're going to move towards the Shanghai Upgrade, uh, formerly known as Ethereum Improvement Proposal 4895, which allows validators to withdraw their staked ETH from the Beacon Chain consensus layer after the successful completion the Ethereum merge on September 15th, 2022. Um, so it looks like the last, on December 8th, um, it was the last meeting of the year, March, 2023. Now this is very important. You wanna know why this is very important? Why? Because if this goes through in March and Ethereum validator nodes are now able to withdraw their ETH and their profits, then that goes directly against Cynthia Lummis, uh, her assessment of Ethereum as a security. Right. Yeah, I've been thinking about some of that kind of stuff. The timelines for next year are going to be very fascinating when you consider regulation timelines, update and upgrade timelines, people that are influencing the regulation, having also similar influence on the protocols. Like when you talk about people like consensus yeah. and like that's where it starts getting really dicey, where if they can front run some of the policy and understand what how it's going to come down and then push through an update that makes them be classified as a commodity rather than a security. I think yeah. that's some of what we're going to see next year. Uh, can't wait till our bill's public. Yeah. Can't wait till that. He's going to show you all the roadmap for how that happens. Um, okay. Developer Marius van der Weijen, uh confirmed that full and partial withdrawals were working on two private Ethereum test nets. It's like, can these people not understand that this is a temporary thing for a few months while this is getting going? You're not going to make policy decisions on whether an asset is a commodity or a security when it's going to change in three or four months. That's right. makes no sense. Well, I think that's part of it is like the the factor that if something can change and how quickly will factor in or they're trying at least right now saying that factors into the conversation. Yeah, but I mean, which is why because of all the environmental calls, you know, from the that's one of the reasons they did it. Um, you know, the pressure put on proof of work. Obviously, to run Ethereum faster, it needs to be proof of stake. Uh, obviously, that's the chunk of it. But you know, you got all these politicians putting pressure on them for the proof of work. Well, now they've done that and they're moving over to proof of stake, or they have. So now they're coming after that. And it's like, you're just not going to make these people happy. Ave seeks uh, the one place you can make people happy cryptocurrency subreddit, where I am the owner of 8,700 moons. Ave seeks community go ahead to list lead, uh, Lido's WSC ETH on its liquidity pool. Uh, you know what I want to do, actually? 
I want to start, you know, I've got a little Ethereum portfolio for the dollar cost averaging. Mm -hmm. I got it over at, uh, I think the Ethereum is maybe sitting on uh, my Coinbase wallet. I want to start trying to use some of this Lido finance. Yeah, I like it. I think, it's, I think it's, it, it's a good way to kind of make some income in the bear market to get some returns uh, in a decentralized way. So, you know, I might take part of that portfolio and maybe go do some of that. We can watch that over the bear market as well. Not going to go too extreme with that stuff, though. Remember, just I want to be able to do it so I'm educated when I talk about it to show people like, hey, if this is something you're going to do, this is the way I did it. And I was able to make money with it or it was a failure for me or whatever. It just gives me better perspective. Um, but it, now it is, uh, let's see, the addition of Wraps ST ETH, WST ETH to its V3 deployment on Layer 2 network. Optimism. Aave's decision to add WSE to its V3 on Optimism was inspired by the success of STE Reserve on Aave V2. Got so many of these, like, we're going to run out of numbers, or uh, run out of letters, I mean, for these acronyms. Don't you think so? Yeah. They got to keep adding. Uh, now you're adding, like, ST to the beginning of everything. Right. You got to add another, you know, now a W. You got a WST, yeah. Oh, TVL, man. yeah. Per data from DeFi Llama, TVL across all these three deployments with $3.85 billion at press time fell 73% on a year-to-date uh, year basis. <clears throat> Hope you guys enjoyed our video where we talked about the difference between ZK rollups and optimistic rollups. I learned a lot. Do you know the difference? Uh, I know. We've talked about it a little bit. I don't know. I know ZK better than optimistic. What's the, what is the core difference? Uh, you know, Sylvia McCauley created uh, ZK snarks, mm -hmm. ZK proofs. Uh, but basically, the long and the short of it is with a ZK rollup, uh, they use snarks, which means as the transaction goes through and is rolled up, it's automatically verified. With the optimistic rollups, it does it faster because it assumes the transaction is real. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, that doesn't make sense. How, how can that be? Because there's money on the line. If you push forth a transaction and it's fake and someone catches it, then you lose a certain amount of staked ETH. You have to stake in order to use the optimistic rollups. So if, if you push a transaction through and it's fake, you lose your staked ETH. However, uh, if you accuse a transaction of being fake and it turns out to be real, then you lose your staked ETH. So there's a lot on the line with these optimistic rollups. Uh, and Vitalik says we still haven't seen the real full implementation of these yet, mm -hmm. that down the road, they'll be even faster. And I think it's pretty cool stuff. Um, the word optimistic, it really fits in this uh, in this case. Brazil lost. Yeah, they he, did. Brazil loses to Croatia, four to two in penalty, oh, and penalty kicks. Oh penalty wow! Kicks, yeah. I thought somebody said Brazil won. Were they up and they scored at the end? I think obviously wow. it was just an overtime. Man, I've watched about seven minutes of the World Cup. I, I would have liked to watch more. I usually watch a good bit of it, but it's been a crazy few weeks. Uh, Matt Hamilton explains to American lawyer why XRP has such a royal army. A royal army. XRP army. Throw the X up. If you are in the chat, uh, on Thursday, uh, Matt Hamilton, a former principal developer advocate at FinTech from Ripple, explained why XRP has such a loyal and passionate community. It all started when Sasha Hodder, or the, the uh, Sasha Hodner podcast, was on that recently. Known her for several years. Uh, let's see. She said, a firm dedicated to helping co clients grow their business cryptocurrency field. Asked on Twitter, even though XRP's performance against USD over the past five-year period has not been that impressive, how did Ripple build such a loyal army with a chat like this or with a chart like this. Um, well, let me show you. Let me, let me show you how it did it. We go here and we go to XRP and we go to still not falling out of the top 10. I don't believe ever since it launched. We go to the all. This here is why it built such a loyal following. People change their freaking lives forever on this pump in 2017. Watch a guy on uh, the cryptocurrency subreddit, actually, uh, you know, sponsored by Moons, um, that said he turned $100 into literally a million with XRP alone. That's crazy. Now, I don't know. I remember reading this in December of 2017. I remember reading it. Um, I was on a hunting trip up in Kentucky, and uh, it might have actually been got my first buck up there. But the point is, it got so much headwind from being the number two overall performing coin in that market right behind uh, IOTA was number one, uh, but like 60,000% gains for XRP during this time. That's how it built it. And people are not dumb. They know the reason it didn't have a new all-time high in this last market was because of the lawsuit. If XRP 
did not have the lawsuit and did not hit a new all-time high in the last market, I think you would have seen a lot of disbelief. You would have seen a lot of people fall to the wayside. But the SEC lawsuit is only added to the mystique of Ripple. It's only added to the mystique of XRP because it's basically paused the growth even during the bull market and said, if you were, if you were in the middle on this one, here, we're going to open it up for a while so you can make that decision and come back in if you want or get in. And I think ultimately, this is why the community is so loyal. People made so much money with it before. People know who the enemy is. It's the SEC. It's Gary Gensler. Uh, and people see the writing on the wall when it comes to the banks uh, in this cross-border settlement and, and, and a network of value over a network of information. So that's my uh, answer to Sasha uh, on that one. Uh, let's see what she also went on to say here. Hamilton, who's currently principal developer at Protocol Labs, uh, he did step down from, I think, officially working with XRP. That is a chart of XRP, not Ripple. You can pick whatever time frame to suit whatever narrative. Over a long enough time frame, XRP is pretty much on par with Bitcoin. Man, they hate when you say that. Most people invest in XRP are interested in actual utility, not just Ponzi-nomics of something like Bitcoin. Oh, gosh. Mm. Uh, here's what OpenAI's chat GPT said about uh, Ripple and XRP. Ripple and XRP are often used interchangeably, but they're actually two different things. Ripple is the name of the company that created the digital currency, XRP. In other words, XRP is the name of the actual digital currency. Ripple is the name of the company, blah, blah, blah. This kind of reminds me, do you remember how big in 2017 it was? How important it was to know the difference between Ripple yeah, and XRP? XRP? Yeah. Reminded me of when I was in the seventh grade and it was like, you had to know the difference between being a poser and not being a poser with right. your skateboarding. Like, if you had a Nash board, you weren't cool. You had Nash board and airwalks? I had to have them DCs in that alien yeah, workshop. Air, yeah, exactly. You know? Because that's what you had to have. Look, <laughs> 2017, you had to know the fidget spinner logo was the company. So uh, I got to hang out with some of the people from uh, Ripple Labs uh, while I was down in Miami. So excited about that. Uh, Going to be having some exciting stuff uh, with the company coming, you know, fairly soon on the channel, I think. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of XRP, but I want Ripple to win. Miles Doucher says, here's why. Do you pronounce his last name Doucher? Deutscher? Doucher? Sucks Maybe somebody knows. Too. Uh, he said some good things about me personally. He sent me a message one time, some good stuff. He criticized me a little bit, but you know what? I don't want anyone to ever think I'm not open to criticism. If you can't tell, I'm very open to criticism. I'm not open to baseless attacks. I don't, I don't like that. Um, cryptocurrency analyst Miles Doucher uh, is taken to Twitter to comment on the lawsuit between Ripple and the U.S. SEC regulator SEC, uh, which is expected to be resolved in early 2023, according to Brad Garlinghouse. Anyone hoping Ripple lose is against crypto. I agree with that 100%. Uh, the Bitcoin maximalists would definitely fit in that category. And look, we're not attacking the maximalists. I'm, I don't attack the maximalists anymore. Okay, I don't say bad things about them. I just say things how they are. Uh, he said for the sake of the industry, he hopes that they win. If they don't, it will massively, it will have massive ramifications, agree 100%. David Gokstein, Gokstein, one of my favorite people in the world in crypto, uh, he said, uh, or he's attempted to get a similar message across in his recent tweet. He said, you don't have to be a big fan of Ripple or XRP. But you should be rooting for them to win their case against the SEC. It would bring clarity to the crypto industry. It would also keep innovation in the U.S. So there you go. Pretty cool. Um, all right. GameStop to drop crypto efforts. Of course, bear market. Nomad Bridge prepares to relaunch after $109 million refund. Would we'll never trust that again. FTC could curb Microsoft's metaverse ambitions with an Activision lawsuit. Interesting. What would, what would they be suing them for? Um... Federal Trade Commission announced a lawsuit to block Microsoft from acquiring. Oh, just from the, ac the acquisition for because uh, like Activision a monopoly is, is Blizzard and Activision's huge <coughs> in gaming. Microsoft obviously pretty big. So you want to do a couple Q and A? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, this is a super chat from earlier from John Connor. He said, "Please invite Crusader from Debate Crypto to discuss XRP with some XRP maxis." He said he's not scared of ATB, and if the SEC loses, he won't apologize. So I guess he's an anti. XRP or he's pro SEC. I'm not sure, but he's just asking to. If the somebody. SEC loses, he won't apologize for hating on it. Basically, he wants one XRP antagonist and three maxis to go at it on uh, on ATV. Uh oh, yeah, I'd, I would do that on our Crusader from Debate. It, I, I like their show. Yeah, it's just always at a bad time for me. Yeah. Like eight o'clock for me to go do a show when I'm with my family and stuff is really hard. No, they're just saying invite him on. I know, I know. I'm just pointing out why I've never been on their show. I like Crypto Keeper and Debate yeah. Crypto, um, and, and Crypto Crusader. Uh, you know what? I've been thinking a lot about... Uh, so I did an interview with Rice 
crypto mm-hmm. or rice tvx whatever he goes by now and uh in that i really talked about my thoughts and feelings on xrp and why uh i can support it even though it seems to be counter from some things that you know crypto stands for uh and i think it's really important to understand your own reasons and your own arguments for what you support and don't support uh and i think obviously that was on his channel i want to take those talking points from that chan- from that uh, interview and probably turn them into one on this channel i'll get it all out there and people will really understand my viewpoints so when it comes to world economic forum like they're ripples partner with the world economic forum where does that fit in um and i think that look um if i get the opportunity to talk to somebody about crypto i'm going to talk to somebody about crypto if i got an opportunity to join the world economic forum you know what i'm going to do i'm going to join the world economic forum they probably won't have me after what I'm about to say, but I'd eat that puppy out from the inside. You know what I mean? That's what I would do. Uh, I would want to know what's going on. Uh, there are some really interesting <clears throat> organizations that have asked me to come speak. Uh, and I will not say no. Like, well, you know, there are certain organizations. I'm not going to speak at NAMBLA. You know, if you guys remember that South Park episode, I think that is a real thing. I'm not going to speak there. But when it comes to politics or when it comes to professions, there's nobody that I won't go try to, spe- to spread a good message to. Um, it, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle it is, and it doesn't matter what their political beliefs are. Um, it, I think you've got to come up with those reasons for yourself, and I've got those reasons. I think we should do that on our channel. I think that's a good idea to uh, debate that stuff uh, on around the blockchain one day. I think that's good. Or, yeah. or Ripple, or Ripple Rocky show. Minerini, are you guys doing a portfolio video tonight? Yep. Uh, coming out at 3. 3, three o'clock. o'clock today. Three o'clock. And... Eric Carlson, what happens to GUSD, BUSD, and other, any other exchange-based stable coins if Circle gets USDC and has government adoption? It'd be similar to Tether. I think it's you don't really have a fear there. It's just going to be a slow, ble- like death of a thousand cuts. Basically, they're just going to slowly get phased out. You know, it's not like you have to be scared of using them. But I would say ten years from now, we won't have as many stable coins as we have today. Yeah, yeah, John Connor. I didn't, I didn't say that the way I really wanted to say that. <laughs> didn't say it the right way I wanted to say it. I see you over there. Uh, okay. <clears throat> all right, guys. Uh, that is all we've got, uh, for today. Uh, we've got videos for you this weekend. Uh, exciting for that. Uh, gonna be on Alex Jones on Monday. We'll have, obviously, Diesel be here on the show. Um, but, uh, really exciting. Let's see. Uh, maybe. I'll check that out, Mike. Thank you for the super chat. All right, guys. That is all I got. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Be blessed. Good boy out. Go hang out in the basement. Yeah, we got Nick's, you, Nick's gonna be hosting today, so that should be fun. Off note.